Welcome to Superhero Pal. I'm your host nerd, Tom Frontier. Hey, how you doing? You ever think about selling your comic books? Well, in my humble opinion, don't. I've sold a lot of comic books. In an effort to clear out my collection and make space and get a little extra cash. And I regret it. I can't tell you how often I run into my collection thinking about a specific comic book only to find that I've sold it. Sad. Or maybe I should say, disappointed! <laughs> Stupid joke. If you get it, you get it. If not, you're truly a better person. But yeah, I miss all the comic books I've sold. I've sold all my Kamiko Robotech comics. I had them all. Though I still have the graphic novel. Sold Dan Jurgens' Flash Gordon series, DC's Dungeons and Dragons books, all my 70s Wallywood All Star comics, lots of Batman, gobs of indies, and it wasn't worth it. So that's my advice to you don't. Video over. Now oh, that was easy. Wait, you really want to do it, huh? All right. Well, the first question is why do you want to sell? Money? Space? Someone gave you a collection you need to unload? Because answering that question will tell you how to sell it. Same with how many do you have to sell? Just a couple? Flipping a few? You got a box? More? Well, the good news is just about everyone is buying these days, so it shouldn't take too much work. Of course, there are variables in play, but it's way easier today than, say, like 20 years ago thanks to collector booms and the internet. And in general, just the growing acceptance of nostalgia. Years ago, if you were into old things, you were weird. And if you were into kids' entertainment, you know, holding on to your youth and all, you were really weird. But times have changed. Stan Lee always told a funny story about going to parties in the 1950s and the 60s. You know, the stuff you only see in movies. Adults standing around in suits drinking cocktails. Anyway. People would often ask Stan, what did he do for a living? And he would reply, I work in magazines. Since no one really cared, that would be it. But on some occasions, people would press him, oh, what magazines? Stan would say, children's magazines, and hope the questions would then stop. But every so often, he had to, you know, like he couldn't lie, but he had to admit he worked in comic books, to which he would then become the pariah of the party. Knowing Stan, I'm sure he's exaggerating, but that's how it was, and those days are over. People now proudly say they work in comics, and people now proudly say they collect comic books. Hence, selling comic books today is easier than it's ever been. Now, based on the question, why are you selling, will determine how to sell. You want money? The more the better? Then don't take them to a comic book store. The last thing a comic book store wants to do is pay you top dollar for your books. This is because they don't want your comics. They want to resell your comics. And if they pay top dollar, then there's no profit in the resell. Rent don't get paid. Timmy don't get braces. It's just a bad scene. So if you want top dollar for your comics, you need to find an end user. Someone who wants it, not someone looking to resell it. You can often find these people at conventions, but to be honest, most people buying at conventions are looking for discounts. They pay top dollar at their local comic book shops, so when they're at a con, they're looking for a discount. I also don't mean flea markets or swap meets either. These places are usually filled with people who don't value comics. It's just something to give a kid they know. And there's usually a bunch of flippers, people looking to pick up comics super cheap just to flip them. So there's no top dollar there. The best place to look for top dollar is on the internet. Yes, there's shipping to deal with, but for the most part, if you're looking for someone who really wants the comic and is willing to pay top dollar for it, you're most likely going to find them on the internet. Of course, you can also find them in your circle of friends or comic book acquaintances. The most I've ever paid for a comic book is like that. Just hanging out at school or at a shop or somewhere talking about comic books and someone says, hey, I have that issue. You can have it for X. That's the best way to get top dollar. Find somebody who actually wants it. Of course, that sounds easier said than done, but 
we have the internet today. Now, if you have some really good stuff, I'm talking comic books featuring top characters, issue numbers under 30, and published before the 1970s, take it to an auction house. Yes, they're going to take a cut, but they should theoretically get you way more than you could ever get by yourself because this is their business and they attract big spenders. Now, if you're worried that, oh, well, my stuff isn't that good or, you know, it's not graded, look, it never hurts to ask, okay? And if it needs to get graded, they're going to help you get it graded. They're probably not going to pay for it unless it's something really iconic, but they'll help you get through those who, and this is their business. They don't mind looking at something as long as it fits their criteria, you know, something with a top character, issue number is under 30, and it was, and it was published before the 1970s. And to a certain degree, if it's in really good shape and if it's from the 1940s, they definitely want to see it. You know, even if it's just a funny animal book, they're still, I'm sure they'd still want to take a look at it. So it never hurts to ask. But for the rest of you, the internet is the best place to get your top dollar. Now, if you're just looking for a little extra cash and you have a lot to sell, go to your local comic book shop because they are always buying. This is because selling old comics is more profitable than selling new comics. So they're usually always buying. Now, as I said, you're not going to be getting top dollar. So if you have some really good issues, maybe pull those out of the box and put them on eBay. But with that said, don't take everything good out of the box. You have to make it worth their time. No one wants a complete run of DC's old sci-fi television adaption V. So leave some Todd McFarlane Spider-Mans in there too, okay? You can pull out a few choice ones, but, you know, be fair. Now, typically, the comic book shop will want to hold on to your collection for a few days so they can get a good look at it. It's probably a good idea for you to have an inventory of everything in the box so you can show it to them saying, this is what I know is inside of it. And it'll allow them to go through your collection faster because instead of checking every little thing, they're just checking to see if certain things that you say are in there are in there. If they think your collection is decent enough, they will offer you some money for it. And it won't be a lot. Now, depending on how much you trust this person, you can trust their offer and even your collection with them. It's super rare, but some shop owners are bad people. So again, have an inventory of what's in there. Make sure that you know, make sure they know you know what's in there and they know what's in there. So if you turn down their offer and they give your collection back to you, you can see if they tried to steal anything. Again, this is super, super rare. You know, this doesn't really happen at all, but you know, trust your gut with these people. But okay, they will make you an offer. You can ask for more, but probably not much more. And you might get it. There's usually some wiggle room, but not much. So don't be greedy. Now, if you're like me, and all you're going to do is spend that money on more comic books, well, once they give you a cash offer, ask for more in store credit. They will give you more in store credit than they will in cash. Now, I hesitate to give you an example because you know, prices can be all over the place. But typically speaking, they will give you more in credit than they will in cash. Now, if you're just trying to unload all these comic books, take the cash. But if you have like a full collection, many boxes, somebody died and you just need to get rid of them, you know, while they're spinning in their graves, yet you still want a better deal, Craigslist. eBay is okay too, but what you're looking for is a flipper, which could be a store. But I don't recommend you drag this collection all around town to every shop in the area. What you're looking to do is to tell the most people who are interested in collections, flippers and stores, that you got one. They will then come to you and you can pick the best offer. All these people are usually online praying to see something like this so you can make their dreams come true. I recommend Craigslist over eBay because it's local and you don't have to mail the boxes or however just trying to figure out, and that person has to come over a couple of states, you know, which is fine if they want to do that. But, you know, you want to take it to a situation where the buyer comes to you, and that's easier on Craigslist than it is on eBay. Lastly, what if you got a bunch of crap? 
a couple of boxes or less, and none of them are bad. Most comic book stores don't want to deal with you at this point. You know, unless you have some fantastic fours from the 1960s in there. But for the most part, it's just nothing special and not in good shape. Now, you could post it on Craigslist. I'm sure flippers would want to take a look. But for the most part, stores don't have the manpower to dig through all that. You could always ask, of course. And there's probably somebody right now yelling at me, oh, I'll take a look at it, Tom. But, but typically speaking, you know, it's not worth their time. And as for taking it to a flea market, is that something you really want to do? You want to spend all your weekend, you want to spend all your weekends at a flea market trying to sell comic books? You know, junky comic books? So for old junky comic books, take them to a used bookstore. You'll get pennies on the pound, but you'll get something and the boxes are now out of your closet. Everybody wins. So that's my advice on selling comics. Auctions for the best stuff, internet for top dollar, comic book stores for the churn, big collections for flippers or stores, and used bookstores for the junk. But most importantly, don't. Learn from my mistakes. Somebody ought to. Either way, thanks for spending time with me. And if you could be so kind to like, subscribe, and notify, uh, maybe I can buy back some of those old issues I've sold. Take care of yourself out there.